Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back. Today's daf is Nazir daf Chav Kimo. We are holding right at the Mishnah, which is three lines from the top of the Amid. Ha'isha shed nadra ba Nazir. And Isha accepted Naziris. Vaisa shoysa ba yayin. And she went ahead and violated the terms of Naziris. Drinking wine, becoming tamil amesim. Harezu se feges es ha'arboim. Of course, she is liable to Malkis. This is an obvious halacha. It is uh, being mentioned on account of the next halacha, which is a chiddush. So this case is straightforward, quite simple. Uh, she was over on Nazirus, which was active at the time. She gets malchus. What about Hefer Lobala? Her husband stepped in and cancelled her Nazirus without informing her. And uh, she's just going along without knowing. Without knowing... Uh, that he did the hafara. So unbeknownst to her, the Naziris has been rendered inactive. She went along and violated the, um, the terms of Naziris. So in her mind, she's trans- transgressing the halachas of Naziris. But, but the truth of the matter is, she was no longer a Nazira at that time because of her husband. So, to her husband's credit, technically his wife was not even any Isser, but in her mind, she, she intended on violating. Still, there's no Malkus coming to her, which seems pretty obvious, but the Chiddush here is that not only is she not getting Malkus Minatoro, she won't even be punished by the Rabbonim, as opposed to Rabbi Yehuda Eimer, if she's not deserving of regular Malkus, at least his plague Makas Mardus, the Chacham should give her uh, Rabbinic Malkus, Mardus, to, uh, to, to punish her and to um, set her back on, on the right path. So that's the point of Machlekes here. Do we apply Malkus with the Rabbonon? Tanakhama says no. Ravida says, well, she is willingly you know, getting involved in an Isser. She deserves Makus to set her straight once and for all, even though Menat Torah, she has not really violated any Yisr. Continues the Gemara, an interesting sugya discussing uh, the importance of uh, not only the, the uh, actual you know, acts of a person, the actions, but the intentions, the kavonis and machshaves as well. How important, how valuable our, our motives and thoughts and intentions are in Hashem's service. Tanu Rabbanu. Isha hafiram basha mislach lo. So the Pasuk says, and Isha made a nether. Her husband did the hafara. Hashem has to forgive her. Why? Why is she need of, uh, in need of forgiveness? Even if she violated the terms of her commitment, her nether was no longer active because her husband canceled it. Explains the Gemara, but may I cost of Madabar, uh, what type of situation are we speaking about? Meaning, if uh, it's a straightforward, simple situation, she made a nether against something, her husband came along and removed the nether, of course she's free uh, to follow through. Why does she need slicha? Why does she need forgiveness? Answers the Gemara, we're speaking Be'isha Shehefer Lobala. She made a nether. For instance, uh, like in our case, a Nazirus. Her husband got wind of it, he went to the Rav, he did a far, uh, he just did a far, he doesn't need a Rav. <laughs> so, unbeknownst to his wife, he did the Afar, Shefer lo Bala, Vilo Yada. And she never got word about that Afar. Hakasim Madab. That's the incident that we're speaking about. So, in her mind, she's still committed to the Nether or to the Naziris. And she goes ahead and she drinks wine. So, even though technically she did not, she did not commit any crime. Still, the Pasuk is telling us, Vashem Yislachla, she is in need of Kapara. She tzricha Kapara Slicha because of her intentions. Says the Gemara, Ukashahaya Magia, Rabbi Akiva, it's a Pasuk Zeh. When Rabbi Akiva would arrive, would arrive at this Pasuk and interpret the Pasuk in accordance with our Pshat, 
that Hashem is holding her accountable to a certain extent, even though technically she didn't do anything wrong, but she was no longer in the zero, she wasn't bound by her nether. But since she willingly got involved in a, a mass inactivity, which in her mind was usher, that is sufficient to require Mechila Slicha Bekapar she needs to do Teshuvah. When Rabbi Kiva got to this Pasuk, which highlights the, uh, the importance of our very, of, of our every thought, word, and action. He would cry, saying as follows, Uma mission is gavan lalus, biyodai basar chazir. Look, even, even this situation, a person, an isha, he used a mashal to describe the, the case, uh, let's say a person, intends, he plans on consuming basar chazir. And Hashem saved him. Hashem speared him. And he was lucky enough to pick up lamb's meat, which is kosher. So in actuality, he did okay. He was saved from an iser. But since he intended on doing iser, ton kapara slicha, we see from this pasak, he is in need of kapara because of his machshav. So even though it's just a machshav, it holds such importance. It requires teshuva. It requires kapara. Certainly, of course, when a person actually does something wrong, certainly, of course, it goes without saying. If a person intends on eating basar chazir, on doing an iser, and in fact, he did carry it out. He carried it through. He ate that basar chazir. So his intentions and actions were were Aveira. Allah has come Vakama, of course certainly he needs Kapara. Kayatib Devarato Imar, in similar fashion, we can apply this idea to the following Pasik, which speaks about an Asham Tali. Person ate something, turns out that it may have been Isr. He brings a special carbon called the Asham Tali. And the Pasak says Vlayodava Ashim he wasn't sure whether he, he actually ate something wrong. It was a suffix and he ate it. So he is in need of, of kapara, he needs to bring a carbon, asham tali. And once again, what do we see from here? We see how careful one has to be and how exacting the system is. Look, even this fellow, who was. Uh, Assuming what he was picking up as a basar tala, he was hoping it was a basar tala. And it turns out that it was something questionable. Safik chazir. Right? What was it? A piece of, uh, you know, fat which looked like, um, you know, perhaps shuman, kosher fat, perhaps non-kosher fat, chaylev. And he went and he ate it. What does the Pasuk say? He is liable. He has sinned. He must bring out Asham Tali. Of course, of course, Mishan is Gavan Lalas Biyadu Basa Chazir. A person really intends on eating non kosher meat. Vola Biyadu Basa Chazir. And he actually carried that out. Allah has come of a Kama. Certainly goes without saying he needs Kapar. Continues the Brisa. It's the third step of the Brisa. Isi Ben Yudo Aimer. He's going to highlight this, this lesson in another, a slightly different fashion. See, because according to Isi Ben Yehuda, the Asham Tali concept only applies when there's an Isser established, meaning there are two pieces of meat. One of them is kosher, one non-kosher, and he went and he ate one of them. Not sure which one he ate. That's when he brings Asham Tali. So therefore he highlights the, uh, the lesson slightly differently than Tanakama. It entails two pieces of meat, one of them being non-kosher. Isa ben Yudaimer, v'lo yada v'asham, v'nasa avaynei. So once again, the Pasuk speaking about an Asham Tali, He's not sure whether he actually ate the kosher or the non-kosher. What do we learn from here? If we find even a person who was eating this piece of meat, hoping and thinking it's kosher, it turns out that it wasn't so simple. It was a suffix. For instance, because he had two pieces in front of him. One non-kosher, one kosher, and he consumed one of them. I'm not sure which one. 
What does the Pasuk say? Vanessa Avoina, he's liable, he's responsible. Hamaskava Nalis, certainly a person who intends on doing Isra Khasr Shalom. Hamaskava Nalis, Yod Basra Khazir. Va Allah be Yod Basra Khazir. And he was successful in doing the Avera. Allah has come and of course. He needs a tremendous kapor. And the Brisa concludes, Al Dovar Zayidvu Kaladoivim. In fact, by taking this lesson to heart, um, it is incumbent on all to um, to be David to uh, to krechts to um, express that a sentiment of how uh, serious things are and how careful we have to be, and if we're not careful, how distressed we have to be. Yidvu kol Okay, end of Bryce. Why does the Bryce have to go through these? Uh, three steps, three examples, pretty much highlighting the same, the same uh, lesson. Because what's the point of all three cases? The Isha, who thought she was in a zero, turns out she wasn't. She's still responsible for her intentions. This fellow who ate something which was questionable, he has to bring Ashim Tali. The next case, he ate something, one of two pieces lying in front of him, turns out to be questionable. He needs a kapara. And all these are pretty much teaching us the same thing. The exactness, you know, the care, the responsibility before proceeding and doing something questionable. What's the point of all these cases? Tzrich and all three need it. If only the first case of the Isha, then a zero. I would think, perhaps Davka over there. She needs Kapur. You know why? She was trying to do an Isra. Truth is, she wasn't really in a zero, but she was trying to do an Isra. And her intentions were Isra. That's why she needs Kapara. But in the next case, it was a piece of meat, a piece of fat. Suffolk Isra, Suffolk Hatter, Suffolk Kosher, Suffolk Non Kosher. He was hoping, he was thinking that it's Mutter. So his intentions were good. So I would think perhaps even though his actions were questionable, perhaps he doesn't need a kapar. And the Chiddush should know even in that case he does. If we only speak about that case, which needs kapar, I would say the Ike Yisura because it turns out that there, there is a good chance that it's Asur. So he needs an Asham Tali. I will issue the Eifel of Bala, but in the case of the issue with the husband, her husband already removed the Nazirus, the Atera, it's certainly totally mutter. Hashem knows it's mutter. So, in terms of action, there was no Isra done at all. Not even a Suffolk Isra. Loyti boy kapara, slicha, perhaps there's no need for kapara. The Chilish is yes. Intentions count. Kavana matters. Viet mahani tarti. If we only discuss those first two cases, which need kapara, Ava Amina, perhaps I would say, hani tarti, only in those two. Who desagulem be kapara slicha? They are deserving of kapara and slicha. Because after all, there was no isser actually established. In the case of the nazira, she's totally uh, mutter. In the case of the piece of meat which was a suffix isser and suffix heter, once again, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't established one way or the other. But when you have two pieces before you. One non kosher, one kosher, you have an established Isser present here. And he took a chance and ate one. Now it turns out we're not sure which one. Perhaps over there, he violated something. He went too far. He took a chance. Perhaps regular kapara, regular slicha, regular asham tali wouldn't be sufficient to address his wrongdoing. Kamash mandalishna, the chilish is no, even in that case. We apply the same concept. We don't consider it like, a, you know, an outright mazed violation. And therefore, an Asham Tali is enough. But the underlying point here is the focus on, on Kavana, on Machshava, on taking care to keep our actions and Machshava is pure. Omar Rabba Barachana Rabbi Continuing on a similar, uh, on the same, the same topic, on a similar vein, 
Ki Yeshurim Darchi Hashem. What does the Pasuk in Hoshea mean when it says, Hashem way, Hashem's ways are straight, are just. But Tzadikim Yilchubam, in fact Tzadikim, can successfully traverse those, uh, those routes. Upoishim Yikosh but sinners will stumble along those same roads. So the road is straight. All depends on the traveler. What does the Pasuk mean? Can I have an example of the same identical activity which by a tzaddik is considered successful and the, tzaddik, and the rasha fails. Marshal the Shnei Adam. Let's give a marshal regarding two fellows, two individuals, both preparing for the carbon Pesach. Shatolis Peschem. They both prepared, they roasted the carbon Pesach and they're about to sit down and partake in it. Now, one of them is a tzaddik. He anticipated the carbon Pesach. He wanted to eat it properly. Allah soiva in a way that it satisfies him without being full uh, beforehand. He generated an appetite. Echad He ate it l'shem shemayim l'shem mitzvah properly. He's a tzaddik. Ve'echad achlei l'shem His friend, the next door neighbor, the Russia, he was already over full by the time he got to the carbon Pesach. Achil He stuffed himself. Zesh achlei l'shem mitzvah. The tzaddik who ate it properly. On him the Pesach says, V'tzaddik yimel chuba. He uh, fulfilled the mitzvah. Optimally. Tzadikim yelchubo. V'zeh she'ochel l'shem achilok asa. But the Russia, who overate, who wasn't enjoying the Karim Pesach, that's not a proper achilok. Upoishim b'kosh l'bam. On him the Pesach says, Upoishim b'kosh l'bam. Amalei reish lakish. So the, the concept is, is true. But reish lakish says to Rabbi Eichen, how could you you know, call this fellow just because he, you know, he wasn't eating it properly. That's called a rasha. Hi, rasha, karsle. He didn't do it, you know, the mitzvah in the most ideal way. You're supposed to eat the Karim Pesach, you know, in royal fashion. Allah, Allah said, you're supposed to eat it with te'avin, with appetite. So it wasn't the best way of eating, eating the Karim Pesach. Pesach, me covet. But ultimately, he was Makaim the mitzvah. Why is he called a rasha? Ella, rather, I'll give you... Um, an analogy which fits the bill. Marshal or Shnei Bnei Adam. We have two people. Ze Ishtav Achay Se Imayim. Of a bias. Ruben happens to have his his wife, who's mutter to him, and his sister, who's an erva to him, both in the house. Ze Ishtav Achay Se Imayim of a bias. Shimon has the same situation in his house. Lazer Nizdam Ali Ishtav. Ruben is a right tzaddik. So Hashem arranged that he interacted as married with his wife in a permissible fashion. And Hashem spared them from getting involved with the Arayis. But Shimon, who was not worthy of being protected, he encountered his sister. So in fact, Ruben, who did it properly, on him the Pasuk says, but Poor Shimon, who pushed him across the bum. On him, the pasuk says, "Pushed him across the bum." He was not protected from Isra. Says the Gemara. Okay, the the idea is true, but again, it doesn't really fit the literal, um, you know, wording of the pasuk. Me dummy, how could you compare the pasuk to the marshal? Anan kamrin and chadaderach. The pasuk is obviously describing one single root. Yisharim Darke Hashem, this same root can prove successful for one and detrimental for the other. Hachashnei Drachem. In your case, there were two options, two separate things that could, could have been done. And he uh, was lucky enough to do it the right way. He fell through and he uh, encountered the, the Yisr. Two different things, two different experiences, two different types of roots. So once again, it's not exactly matching the Pasuk. I want a, a situation where it's the same exact experience, the same masa. For the person on one side of the masa, the tzaddik, is considered to his merit, and to the rush on the other side of the same story, it's considered to his detriment. Ella, rather, it's as follows: Mashal leloit ushtei Imai. famous leloit with his two daughters. 
they were involved as married. Now, you would think everybody was involved in the same activity. And they're all equally, you know, praised or uh, admonished, right? Either it's good or no good. No. Depends on intent. On motive, on, the, on your motivating factor. Hain shen is gotten l'shem mitzvah. His daughter is meant l'shem mitzvah. To reestablish, you know, civilization. It was l'shem shemayim. But tzadikim el chabam. They were considered tzadikim in what they did. As opposed to who? Lloyd himself. Who did not have that same agenda. Who should not have Him and uh, He and his mind was involved in a, a less than worthy activity. On him the Pasuk says, So we have two coins of the same activity. For him it's a, a mala, a mitzvah. For him it's an avir. Says the word, How do you know what Lloyd had in mind? Maybe he also meant l'shem mitzvah. It's not so. The Pasuk says, uh, tells us as such. If you take a look at the Pasuk describing Light's travels, there are many mentionings of, of, of words alluding to improper intentions, improper uh, motives. It says, the whole Pasuk reads as follows. As Enav Vayaris called Kikar Hayarden, Kikula Mashka of Nash, if nay, Shachas Hashem is done by Moira, Kigan Hashem Keras, and Shrine Boya Hatzer. This is when he decided to leave Avram Avino. Let's take apart the Pasuk word by word. Baisa Loit indicates something less than worthy. He was aiming for something else, Arayis, like we find by Ishas Petifar. It says, Vatisa Ishas Adoinov, as he knew. The next words in the Pasuk are as Enav. Once again, it's alluding to improper behavior. Like by Shimshin and the uh, Isha ki Yishara be'inai. The next word, Vayar. We find that Pasuk by Vayar Oisa Shechem and Chamar, less than proper behavior. The next word is called Kikar Ayardin. We find that alluding to improper behavior as well. Ki ba'ad Isha Zoyna, at Kikar Lechem. Further, Ki Kula Mashke. We find that as well by Znus. Elcha Achara Mahavai. No Yisnei Lachmei. Meimei V'tzamri Yopishti Yishimri V'shikuyai. So Mashke and Shikuyai go together. Ask Sigmar. Why are we holding light accountable? What did he do wrong? For being us honest. It was done while he was drunk. They, uh, they brought him into the situation. Why are you blaming him? The answer is like this. The first time he didn't know, but the second time he did. And he should have been careful. Why do we find a, in the Torah, a period, a dot, situated above the vav of the word ubikuma, of the older daughter? Loimar to teach us follows. Shabashikh walayama. In fact, the onset of the experience that was done without his awareness. But the termination of that experience, by that time he was already back into it and he knew. So he was aware of about what happened. And therefore he's responsible. Um, I have Why are you considering him guilty? What could he have done at this point? It was too late. My Dabahava passed his past. Afkimina, oh. The point is, the Lepanya Achrina, the next night he should have been careful. Le'ibayla, Mishti Chamri, he should have kept away from wine. Dara Shrova, what does the Pasuk mean? Again, regarding light. Pasuk and Mishle, Ach, a brother, a relative. He's a relative of Ramavino. It says, Kanosha, Ach, 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 Nifsha, he broke away, Mikirias, Oiz, from the bastion of strength, from Avavavino. Umedonim, Umedonim, Kevriach, Armoin. And he created strife which locked him out like he bolted the door from the palace. He could no longer join Klal Yisrael. His descendants from Amon and Moev are outlawed. Ach, Nifsha, Mikiris, Yoram, says the Gemara, Mikiris, Oiz, Zeloi. That's Loi, Shepirash, Mavram, who separated from Avram. The Pasa continues. O Medyana, Kebriach, Armon, Sheito, Medyana. Created strife. Kebrichin, of Armon, and bolted himself out like a Briach from the Armon, from the palace of Klal Yisrael, as the Pasuk says, anybody from Amun and Moyav, Lloyd's descendants can not join the Jewish nation. Dorash Rav, V'yitayim Rav Yitzchak, what is the Pasuk? In Mishle Yitches, uh, mean when it says, L'sava, for desire Yevakesh Nivrod, one separates himself from the pack, from the rest of the community, to pursue his personal desires. U'bekoyot Toshiyah Yizgalo, and his shame will be 
revealed to all as taught and presented in the Torah. Who, which individual? Who's this going on? Once again, it's going on light. Zelot. He wanted to do his own thing, lead his own lifestyle. He separated from the Tzadik of Ramavinu. And what was the result? Ubekoil to Shia Yizgala. What happened? Shin Yizgala clean his shame. Was revealed and publicized. Bibatnik Nesiv, Ubatim Midrashis. The Pasuk says they can no longer join us. We have it in the Mishnah as well, the Snan. Amoyni Miyavi, anybody from that nation, Asurin, they can't join. We Asurin, Israelim, all their descendants are at Lord. Tesis says, Ubakoil to Shia Yizgala. In the t- entire Torah, we find that his his shame is revealed and pronounced in Torah Shabbat Sav, as per the Pasuk we mentioned before, Lo Yavo Yamoyni Miyavi B'Kal Hashem, and in Torah Shabbat Peh as well, as per the Mishnah we just mentioned, Amoyni Miyavi Asurin V'Yisurin Yisraelo. Once again, back to the topic of Machshav, of intention. Here comes the Chiddush. Amor Ula. We find uh, cases, uh, two, two of Two cases which are very similar, but oh, so different in terms of their essence and their outcome. We find Tamar Zinsa, uh, the, the uh, Yehuda, right? One of the Shvatim, his daughter-in-law Tamar, interacted with him as married. L'shem Shamay, Zimri Zina, Zimri, the Rasha, in the, in the Midbar. He got involved with Kazbi Basur. So both very similar acts. And look what happened. Tamar Zinsa, by her, the descendants, kings and prophets, because she did it l'shem shemayim. Zimri Zina, his uh, improper behavior brought about catastrophe. Enough flew all of Kamar of Yisrael. He brought about downfall, destruction. Tens of thousands amongst Klal Yisrael suffered and died because of him. Omar of Nachmar Yitzchak, Gedolah very l'shma. At times, a person may be compelled to do something improper. But if it's L'Shem Shemaim, it is praiseworthy. Of course, we have to be careful. It's not for us to decide. This is something that the previous generations were able to, uh, you know, work through. But in concept, we find that it, even not Vera, but a L'Shema can be greater than a mitzvah, a mitzvah shalai L'Shema, than doing a mitzvah without the proper intentions. Says the more, really? An Avera L'Shema is greater than a mitzvah shalai L'Shema? Vamar Vida Marav. It's not so. A person should pursue Torah mitzvahs even without, you know, Avas Hashem and biggest, uh, uh, you know, Madregis of, of, of Kavona and Av and Kedusha. Because eventually, eventually, enough of Shaloy Lishma, enough activity, even if Shaloy Lishma will draw you into Lishma, you'll get an appetite. Like they say, you know, Mitta Essen, Kumta Appetit. You know, through eating, you get an appetite. Rabbi Chaim Velashen writes, a person learns a couple of hours, it's inevitable that he's going to get to a point that he's really going to feel close to Hashem. Uh, others for him write that the, the actual mitzvah, that even Shlai Lishma eventually will be elevated when in fact a person turns around and rises in his level. In any case, a person should not shy away from doing Torah mitzvahs even if he doesn't have the highest levels of Lishma. So of course, that's, uh, that's better than Avera. Even if the Avera is Lishma, Ella Ema, let's modify the uh, a saying as follows. This is the uh, the formula. Avera lishma is kim mitzvah shalil is uh, equated in some way to a mitzvah shalil because each one has a, a mal and a chesar. Right? Avera, the action is uh, an avera, but the intention is good. So you have the intention, but not the action. On the other hand, you have a mitzvah shalil You have a good action, a good masa, but the intention is a bit off. So either way, you have one up, one down. So it's similar in nature. Both are, uh, the Russians, both are chashev. What do we see? That even Navera, Lishma, can have meaning, can have value. The chsev tevorach menoshem yoel. Eishas chever akeni. Yoel, the wife of chever, saw um, Sisra running. She sought to destroy him and thus save Kal Yisrael. And she offered him, you know, hospitality and she interacted with him which technically was an Avera, but she was doing it to save Kal Yisrael, and therefore was permitted. And the Pasuk praises her. She should be blessed. Minashem Ba'el Tavayrach, like the great Imois. So Rivka Rachav where we find the Lashon Oil mentioned, as the Tesis brings here. Man Nashem Shabayil, in fact, who are these Nashem Shabayil that the Pasuk was referring to when he, uh, equating in a way to Yoel Eishas Chever Akeni? Sarah Rivka Rachav uh, so we see that Torah 
the Pasuk praises her, even though she did not bear, but it was uh, Lishma. She gets the, the Bracha, like the Imois, and the Mepharshim explained that uh, in a certain way the Imois were involved in the Mitzvah Shalei Lishma, uh, in terms of the fact that the They allowed, they um, encouraged, you know, they, they recommended to Yaakov to uh, take take their shifcha. The the Mifarish learns it was it was uh, in order to uh, for them to get more shvatim sort of on their on their uh, to their credit. Obviously, we're talking about the biggest uh, tzaddikim and tzaddikas here. It's not for us to judge, but that's the way the Mifarish uh, learns the Gemara. In any case, the point here is the point of the matter is. Intention, kavana, lishma, how important it is. On the one hand, on a positive note, even navira shaloy lishma. Sorry, even navira, but if it's lishma, is considered chashiv. Uh, that's on a positive note, and on a negative note, uh, even the uh, even a masa which is not navira, but the kavana is impure. Like the isha who's thinking she's in a zero and she's going ahead and drinking anyways, that needs lichav a kapara. On a positive note, real positive note, a mitzvah, right? Ideally, a mitzvah should be done lishma, but even shloi lishma, it also has value. And a person should not shy away. Lo elu miasik adam b'torah b'mitzvahs in all situations. So, on the topic of Yoel Eishes Chevarakeni, what happened with her and sister? Amar Biyach and Sheva Bilo is Baal Eishe Rasha Baal Eishe This Rasha sister was involved with her, with her as married seven times. We find seven mentionings of interactions in that Pasuk. How could she do that? She's benefiting from the experience. With a Rasha? That's terrible. That's not Hanah. Any a favor, so to speak, provided by a Rasha, is compelled to interact and receive from that Russia, from its torture. Shanamari Shamalacha Midabra Miyaka Mitara Tevadra, as we find elsewhere. Hashem warning Lavan when he was pursuing Yaakov, don't involve yourself with him. Mitoivadra, don't speak to him good or bad. Now, Bishlam Ra, I understand why he was warning him against speaking Ra, well, Shaper, of course. Don't threaten Yaakov Avino, that's understood. Oh, Toiva Mailoi, what's wrong with. Praising him and complimenting him and telling him a good word. Elo lash mamina, we learn from here. Toiva say the toiva coming from Russia. He all he only means is himself. He's not providing. He's not giving. It's all about himself. Rahi. It's considered a raw shmamina that proves the point. Goofa, let's go back to the lesson we learned before. Omar vidam marav lo elo miyasu godam betoyro b'mitzvah safilu shloi l'shmon. Even a person can't bring himself to learn the shem shemaim. Go ahead, learn anyways. Do mitzvahs anyways. Shem betoyro shloi l'shmon ba l'shmon eventually. That act, that masa, that Torah will not be lost. It will be elevated to Lishma. We're going to prove it. From a story in Tanakh. Shebeschar membez karbonis. How many karbonis did Balak offer to Hashem? 42. Tosef says he made a mezbeach three times. Each time bringing Sorry, brought uh, Seven mizbeches, right, in three locations. So three times seven, 21. And uh, each mizbeach had a parva ayo. Okay? So it's 21 times two, 42. He was doing it, why? To facilitate a klala, to enable, to empower Bilam to curse us, right? And he got schar for it. Shebeschar merimbez karbonis, sheikr balav karasha. In the merit of the 40 karban is brought by Bolaka Rasha, look what happened to him. Not to himself personally, but to his daughters, to his descendants. Zacha, he was Zacha of Yatsa Men Rus. He had his greatest descendant, Rus. Eventually, his, his merits carried weight and generated beautiful results. So nothing goes to waste, nothing goes to lost. Rus, Bas, Benoishal, Eglon, Melech Moiv, Haisas. We find that, in fact, Rus. Traces her lineage back to Eglain Melech a descendant of Balak.
continues the Gemara. Where do we find that Hashem will not withhold reward for even a good word, a positive word, a proper expression? Even that gets schar. Everything has value. How do we know that? Back to the story of Light with his daughter, two daughters. So we have the older one, the Bechira, who went first. The Krisei Mayav. How did she name her child? Mayav. Me'av, he's my father's child. Not the uh, nicest name. And they got retribution for it. Amalei Rachmona. So because of that, Hashem tells Moshe to instruct Kal Yisrael, Al Tatsur is Mayav. You know what? Uh, Moshe Rabbeinu, don't, uh, don't fight with them. Al Tatsur is Mayav. Val Tizkar don't instigate war with them. Let's make a diok. No war. But you can uh, you know, challenge them. You could uh, make life miserable for them. Muhammad Aloy Aval Tsura Tsarina. It could be Mitsaira them. That's by Moya. Vilu Tsira, but when it comes to the younger daughter, who is more careful? Who is more dignified in her expression and her reference to her child? The Karisa Ben Ami. Her child, which also came from her father, was named Ben Ami, son of my nation. Without explicit mention of the uh, true story. Because of that, Armale, Hashem tells Moshe, Al Tetsuram. Al Tetsuram, Al Tiskarbam. Don't even, you know, instigate. Don't get in, get involved with the Amoinim. Don't bother them. Afilu Tsiurei, Loi Tetsarim, and Cloud. Don't even bother them. Because of the schar of their grandma. Omar of Chibra Abner of Shoban Karcha. One more thing we learned from the story. Loyalom Yag de Madan Bar Mitzvah. A person should be careful to be magnet, to be Zaris. To hurry up and do a mitzvah at the first available opportunity. Because of that one night that the older sister preceded, jumped ahead of the younger one, she grabbed the mitzvah first. So both daughters eventually had descendants which were um, rose to kingship in Kali Yisrael, but the older one was like her. Descendant uh, became Melech way before four daughters before the same happened to the younger sister. Apparently, because of her, the schar of her zrizis in her uh, mitzvah actions. Okay, so we spoke about the importance of machshava on the negative side, on the positive side. We have uh, Anisha who doesn't realize that she's uh, no longer in zero. She proceeds thinking she's doing an isra. She needs slicha, machshava. Kavana, intent, counts. On the flip side, a person could even do an Avera. If he's big enough to figure out how to do it right, Avera Lishma, as we find by Yoel Eishas Chever Akeni. Not something for us to decide, us simple people, but in concept we find that it was to their credit, even though it was an Avera, but Lishma is what gives it life. Lishma is what determines its quality. On the Mitzvah side as well, we speak about Sadiqi Mel Chubam, we speak about Lashem Shemaim, we speak about uh, doing Torah Mitzvah Lashma, but even Shalai Lashma. We say a person should involve himself with Shalai Lashma because eventually he's going to rise to Lashma, nothing goes to waste, everything gets schar. We find by Balak, we find by the children of, of Light, Hashem accounts for everything thoughts, words, or actions. Hatzlacha Rabbah, Psurus Taivis, Ksiva Chasimah